Sometimes stormtroopers and walkers aren't enough. Sometimes you have to send in a vehicle so powerful, immobilizing it doesn't make it any less deadly. What's up meta nerds? In today's video, we'll be talking about the Imperial Patrol Speeder from Legends. A very cool vehicle that only appeared once in a Star Wars newspaper comic. The Imperial Patrol Speeder was a vehicle seen on the planet Aridus in the year 0 ABY. Luke and an imposter, Ben Kenobi, fought against this repulsor tank on their journey to destroy an Imperial fortress located on this planet, and save a local species known as the Chubits. Unfortunately, there are no sources that give the exact measurements of this vehicle, so we'll have to dive into a little bit of speculation regarding its stats. We don't know the manufacturer, but this repulsor tank shares many design characteristics with products of Rathana Heavy Engineering, like the TX-130, 2M, and TX-225. And in comparison with the 2M and TX-130 in particular, the patrol speeder shares these main two viewports on each side of the vehicle. Now for its size, we'll use this photo of Luke looking down at it, and we can get a little bit of scale on this vehicle. And we can also do some deduction with the fact that each of these pods contains a single gun mount with two vision ports, which most likely means that one or two guys crewed each of these guns. To get some rough measurements, we'll compare it to the aforementioned pick with Luke. And by using this 3D model, we can get a much more accurate sense of the height. By using this human model as a reference, the patrol speeder is almost exactly three persons tall. Luke has a height of 5 foot 9 inches, so that times 3 is about 17 feet 3 inches. So we'll go with a little more than 17 feet. To compare its height with another ground vehicle, the AT-AT, which was 74 feet, so it's about a quarter of that height, or about a Jawa taller than an AAT. For width, the patrol speeder is 6 persons wide with about an extra foot, or about 34.5 feet, about a Wookiee less than an AAT. For its length, the patrol speeder is about the same, about a foot less than 6 lukes, or 33 and a half feet, almost equal to the AAT. All these attributes together give us a vehicle that might be 4 times smaller than the AT-AT, but may pack even more firepower. This repulsor tank was heavily armed on each side, having two forward-facing blaster cannons, two side-mounted blaster cannons, and then an additional four side-mounted blaster cannons mounted on a turret. These smaller laser cannons were all mounted in spherical barbettes that provided better aiming and a larger firing cone for the guns. The main turret was armed with one large gun, and although we don't know the power output, it is shown in the comic as firing a beam-like weapon. So perhaps instead of a normal blaster cannon, the main gun was instead a laser cannon or even a turbo laser. Something similar to what we see in the CIS's AAT. What's interesting to know is that compared to other Imperial vehicles, the patrol speeder's main gun is very long extending outwards from the body a considerable amount. Which makes me wonder if this thing was designed for some long-range accuracy. The bottom of this repulsor tank has several circular objects, which although we don't really get a good visual of, this is most likely the repulsor system that gets it off the ground. And there appear to be these two hatches on top of the vehicle for entering and exiting. In comparison to other vehicles of the Empire, its use as a patrol vehicle with so much firepower and perhaps an incredible accuracy and range with that main gun, it could be both more deadly than the AT-AT while also being a lot harder to take down. As for its history, the Imperial Patrol Speeder would be used by the Galactic Empire as early as 0 ABY, only a few months after the destruction of the first Death Star. They would mostly play a defensive role and be spread across the galaxy protecting various bases crucial to the Empire. One such example would be on the planet Aridus, where many of this type were used to patrol the perimeter of the Imperial Fortress known as the Iron Tower. The Iron Tower was a massive base used by the Imperials on Aridus to control the local population called the Chubits. This structure would act as a long-range transmission tower and had to be built large enough to overcome the dense ionized atmosphere. One of the side effects of this incredibly powerful transmitter signal was that its frequencies actually damaged the nervous system of the Chubit people. This outcome had a good side effect for the Imperials, as it prevented the Chubits from attempting any sort of rebellion. The tower would also serve as a base for Darth Vader, where he would create a very interesting plan to lure Luke to the planet. Using an actor that resembled Obi-Wan, Vader sent this actor to inspire the Chubits to attempt a rebellion. On one occasion, the actor would rescue a rebel agent, who returned to Yavin 4 to tell news that Ben Kenobi had returned. Upon hearing this, Luke immediately departed to Aridus to meet his master who mysteriously disappeared. Upon arriving, Luke would encounter the imposter, but actually believe that it was the real Obi-Wan, and this actor was even able to make it look like he had force powers, all thanks to some clever tech. The actor was instructed to lure Luke to the Iron Tower, where together with Vader, they would kill the young Jedi. But on their way, they would encounter an Imperial patrol speeder blocking their path. The vehicle would force them to the high ground to avoid the multitude of weapons this machine used. They were almost killed by the main gun, but as it approached, it continued firing on the two, and as it was distracted with the Jedi, a handful of Chubits had set up on a cliffside directly behind the large repulsor tank. Despite its powerful weapon, the patrol speeder unfortunately had an Achilles heel. 
A direct hit to the main thruster would render the craft immobile, but despite losing its repulsors, the speeder was all but defenseless. Thanks to the large amount of smaller guns placed around the body, the speeder was still able to fire these weapons even while incapacitated. An impressive feat, and something some Star Destroyers could learn from. The Chubits continued to fight the down speeder as the imposter Obi-Wan headed towards the Iron Tower. Luke asked Ben to help him take out the speeder once and for all, and save several of the Chubit Resistance fighters. Although he had a strict mission to complete, the actor indulged Luke's request, and the two went to destroy the vehicle. The fakey one Kenobi used his lightsaber to slash the speeder's power cells, causing a massive explosion which completely destroyed the tank, and almost killed both Luke and this actor. The two would eventually make it to the Iron Tower, but seeing Luke's kind actions would convince him to sacrifice himself in order to disable the Iron Tower and attempt to kill Vader. The tower was heavily damaged, but Vader would survive, only being trapped momentarily. And unfortunately, this would be the only time we see the Imperial Patrol Speeder in action, but we can assume this heavy repulsor tank could be used across the galaxy whenever there was a large fortress in need of patrolling. So that's it for its history, but you definitely want to hear these cool facts and behind the scenes stuff first appeared in the Star Wars newspaper comic, The Return of Ben Kenobi, and would end up being its only appearance. And there were actually two vehicles with the name of Imperial Patrol Speeder. The planet the IPS was used on, Aridus, was planned to make an appearance in the campaign of the game Empire at War, where a ground invasion by rebels was made to free the local population. It is directly stated that Chubits would be supplied with T2B and T4B tanks, which now that we see what they were up against, makes complete sense. I know I'd like to see a tank fight between these three. Well, what's funny is that the manufacturer of these rebel ground vehicles, U-Train Tracata, was actually based on Aridus. They were also responsible for the T-3B series and the MZ-8 Pulse Cannon. Other than this, Aridus appears numerous times throughout Legends, even being a holdout for the Yuuzhan Vong after their invasion. But the planet has even made its way back into canon, where it is mentioned in the Star Wars Force Awakens beginner game. So that's it for this incredibly obscure heavy repulsor tank. If you want to connect with us on social media, find ways that you can help support this channel without it costing you a thing, or check out our Patreon. Be sure to check out the links in the description. Special shout out to our supporters over on Patreon, but most important of all, remember, sometimes Vader hits the spice when he comes up with these schemes to capture Luke. And the Force will be with you. Always.